One of the reasons that so many people are spending money is because a lot of people that have student loans still aren't making their payments. I mean, I can't even believe this. I'm reading all these articles about student loans, and maybe this is a good transition into these Supreme Court cases, but the moratorium on student loan interest payments and principal payment began during COVID, right? It was supposedly emergency. People were, it was COVID, so people couldn't make their student loan payments. Of course, the irony of that is most people made more money during COVID than they did before COVID because you had a lot of people who were receiving stimulus checks that were bigger than their paychecks. So they actually had extra money that they could have used to make their student loan payments except they didn't have to make the payments. So not only did they get the extra money from the stimulus checks, but they got the extra money from not having to make any payments on their student loans. Same thing, a lot of small businessmen got these PPP loans. Maybe they had some student loans that they didn't have to make payments on and they were swimming in uh, PPP money. So supposedly everybody didn't have to make these payments. It's now been three years, July in 2023, and people are still not making their student loan payments. Now those payments are supposed to resume September 1st. Now, I don't know, maybe they will, maybe they won't, but that's when they're supposed to resume. And you don't have to start getting late payments. They don't start, I guess, interest or power. I don't know what happens, but that doesn't start until October. So you have to start making your current payments in September, but you don't have to really start making your back payments until October, right? If you want to be able to, you know, start paying without any interest or penalties, right? So I guess you could, you don't even have to make your first payment in September. But again, nobody has to make the back payments. It's not like you have to make a big lump sum payment. It was just a moratorium. All your payments stopped and all interest stopped accruing for three years. And so now you're just resuming. But the point is all of these people that have student loans, and there's actually more than 1.8 trillion in student loans. That is a huge number. I mean, that's more debt than we have credit card debt, which is about 1.3 trillion. But that is a lot of debt. And there's, of course, no collateral behind the, the student loan debt. It's not like you could take somebody's diploma back if they don't pay the student loan, right? At least with a mortgage, there's collateral there. If somebody doesn't make the mortgage payment, you could take the property and sell it and get some money back. But if somebody doesn't make the student loan payment, it's 100% loss. There is no collateral to recover, to try to collect anything. It's 100% loss, you know, on, on, on student loans. But that's an enormous... Um, amount of principal where there are no payments. So what have all of these people been doing with the money that they didn't use to pay their student loans? Well, they've been spending it. They've been buying food. They've been traveling. They've been buying computers or whatever. They've just been using the money. Well, what's going to happen to consumer spending when all of a sudden people who haven't made any student loan payments in three years all of a sudden have to start making payments? And of course, during those three years, the cost of living has gone way up. Prices are much higher today than they were three years ago. And now people don't have that extra income that they're not paying on their loans to cover those higher costs. Yes, you know, wages are up a little bit, but not nearly as much as prices. So that means we have to see a big drop in consumer spending if people resume payments on these loans. And that's just going to accelerate the downward pressure on the economy and, <coughs> and move us into recession. Of course, in theory, that should reduce the deficit somewhat because now the government's going to start collecting those payments. But you're not going to see that because of the increasing interest rates that are going to swell the deficit. So the deficits may increase at a somewhat slower rate because people are now paying back some of these loans to the government that they weren't paying before. But we're still going to see increasing deficits and we're going to see increasing debt service payments as more and more low yielding debt matures and has to roll over at these higher rates. But getting back to the Supreme Court, what also happened this week on the student loan moratorium is that the Supreme Court declared unconstitutional Joe Biden's presidential decree that there'd be student loan forgiveness. And this is something, of course, that was obvious. I mean, even President Biden himself a few years ago admitted that he had no constitutional authority to uh, forgive student loans, but then he did it anyway. And now that the Supreme Court is validating what he first said, he's acting like this is a shock. Like, how dare the Supreme Court uh, declare this unconstitutional? Clearly, the executive cannot, by decree, wipe out uh, debt for so many Americans. Because obviously, that is this like a spending bill. You're giving money to some Americans 
And obviously you're putting the bill on everybody else because if the government is going to forgive student loans, that's revenue that the government was supposed to get that it's foregoing because all the people that have student loans, we're going to have to pay those loans back. Biden forgiving the loans. Well, you know, that's like that's like a tax cut for certain individuals. And now you're going to have much bigger budget deficits, which other taxpayers are going to have to cover. Clearly, the executive can't do that. I mean, we presidents just don't raise taxes or cut taxes on their own. All of this stuff has to go through Congress. I mean, all these revenue bills have to originate in the House and they move on to the Senate. And only after both houses of Congress have decided on this, does the president get to have a say? He can either uh, sign the bill or he could veto the bill, but he can't bypass Congress altogether and just pass a decree. And then, you know, the way the Constitution works, even if the president rejects a bill, he vetoes a bill, that Congress passed, Congress can override his veto. But here, the president by decree decides to forgive student loans, and there's no way that Congress can override that decision. The president just stole this authority, constitutional authority that belonged to the Congress, and he just you know usurped it uh, for himself. And of course, now what is Joe Biden doing after he you know realizes? that he violated the Constitution. He's trying to figure out how to get around it. If the Constitution says something, your job is not to try to get around the Constitution. You know, when Joe Biden is sworn in, he swears an oath to defend the Constitution. He doesn't swear an oath to try to get around the Constitution or avoid the Constitution. He's supposed to follow it. He's supposed to obey it. And so if the Supreme Court says, hey, just in case you didn't realize this, what you're doing is unconstitutional, Joe Biden is supposed to respect that other branch, right? Because he doesn't have any respect for Congress. That's a different branch of government. Now he doesn't have any respect for the Supreme Court either, because maybe he was asleep during civics, right? Eighth grade. But we have three branches of government. Biden is the, ex the executive. He's just that one branch. You got Congress and you got the Supreme Court. Well, apparently Biden doesn't care about Congress or the Supreme Court. He just wants to, you know, be a dictator as uh, the executive and just decide what he wants to do. And he doesn't want the other uh, branches of government to have any say in the matter. Uh, and that just shows you, you know, the, the type the type of president that we're dealing with here. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.